Now that you have finished your warm up, here's the video lecture of my PowerPoint that goes with the notes you need to fill in. Remember anything in red minus the picture. Sorry, it's a nice photo. Um, otherwise, anything after this slide in red, you need to fill into your notes. Now we're going to focus on the medieval church, and we're going to talk about a brief period of war, heresy, what exactly that is, and conquest. Before we get started, here's some background information you need to know to fully understand what was going on. So we are still in medieval Europe. We are around the year 1100 which means that the Great Schism, which you could have done the political cartoon on, that has already occurred. So the Catholic Church has split up into two different branches by this time, just a few decades prior. You have on in the East, which is the Byzantine Empire, they have the Eastern Orthodox Church, led by the Patriarch. And in the West, which is where we're focusing, you now have the Roman Catholic Church church. So whenever I talk about the church in this PowerPoint, it's the Roman Catholic Church. Now by around 1100, people in medieval Europe are starting to question the church. Some people are questioning the actual church teachings, while others are questioning why so many of the clergy, these people, why these people seem to be more focused in earning money and gaining land for themselves as opposed to God, which is what the church is all about. So people begin to preach and express their own ideas about religion, which is an issue for the Roman Catholic Church. In response to this, the Roman Catholic Church sends out friars, which are basically traveling preachers, and these friars go around Europe and they try to stop people from preaching, and they are looking for heretics. Now, heretics are people who oppose accepted church teachings, as well as religious ideas. So the Roman Catholic Church really doesn't want you thinking your own thoughts. They want you to think what they have told you to think. And anyone that goes against the Roman Catholic Church is deemed a heretic. Some obvious examples, Jews and Muslims... I mean, they're different religions, so of course they have different thoughts than the Roman Catholic Church. They are labeled as heretics, as well as anyone else that thinks something different. Now, most people that were um, accused of heresy and labeled a heretic, they confessed in order to spare their own lives. If they wanted to live, they confessed to being a heretic. Usually they were just given a fine and they went off to jail. Others who refused to confess to heresy were usually tortured until they confessed or tortured until they died because they refused to confess to being a heretic, whether they were or weren't. Now, let's go and focus on France. So in France, the year is about 1200. We jumped ahead a little bit. You have the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church, which is Pope Innocent II at that time. He calls for a crusade. A crusade is a religious war. And he wants to stop those heretics, the people who oppose the church, from preaching in southern France. So this crusade happens down here for about 20 years. And just like war does everywhere, anytime, it destroys much of southern France. And unfortunately, thousands of people are murdered as a result. If we go further west, so this is France, now we're in Spain, which is here in red, and Portugal, which is the little country off to the side. In this area, we have what historians have deemed the Reconquista. Now this is when the Christians fought to rid Spain and Portugal of the Muslim Moors. And this is when they reconquer the territory for the Christians, aka the Reconquista. Now, jumping ahead a little bit again, by 1250, the Christians have successfully reconquered this territory except for a small portion called Granada. If you take a look at this map, you can see. Today we call this area that I'm highlighting, all of this is modern day Spain, and this little bit is Portugal. Today we call them countries. Back then they were referred to as kingdoms. So you have your kingdom of Portugal, 
and Spain is split up into multiple kingdoms. The three we are going to focus on are the Kingdom of Castile and Leon, the Kingdom of Aragon, and the Kingdom of Granada. Now, at this time, it was very common for kings and queens to marry each other in order to gain more land. And that's exactly what happened with King Ferdinand, who is in charge of this territory, and Queen Isabella, who's in charge of this larger territory. They marry and pretty much unite Spain into almost one territory, except for this small chunk of Granada, which is also Muslim, and they are Christian. They unite most of this territory of the Iberian Peninsula, or Spain, and Portugal, is Christian. Granada is Muslim. Now, they attack Granada, and they successfully reconquer this territory for the Christians. So the Muslim emir at the time, he signs a treaty in January of 1492, essentially surrendering this territory to the Christians. So King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, what they pretty much did in the Reconquista is they forced all the Jews, who they've labeled as heretics, out of the territory as well as the Muslims. Now, I must say they did give them the option to convert, so you can convert to Christianity and stay. But if you don't, then you need to leave our territory, and if you don't leave our territory, then we're going to kill you. You don't have very many options if you're a Jew or a Muslim. Now, because of all of this, Spain is essentially forced to become Christian. Now, you still have your people that are hiding out, though. I mean, it's natural. It still happens today. So those heretics that are hiding out and still practicing Judaism and or Islam in the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal, they are going to be found out by Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand because they set up what is known as the Spanish Inquisition. An Inquisition is basically a religious court. So they want Spain to remain Christian. The Spanish Inquisition is comprised or made up of priests that would punish people for secretly trying to practice their old religion. People found guilty of heresy were often burned to death. Depends on where you are looking, what source it is. But rough estimates, over 3,400 people in Spain and Portugal were burned at the stake for being heretics. Now, an interesting fact. Um, shortly after all of this, the Spanish Inquisition, the Reconquista, the Crusades, since the war with the Muslims was over in 1491-1492, Queen Isabella of Spain was actually able to help pay for Christopher Columbus to take his transatlantic journey, which is fascinating in my opinion, because if anything had gone differently, it took longer, it took less time, uh, the Christians didn't win, the Muslims took over. There are so many possible situations that could have occurred that would have prevented Christopher Columbus going on his journey, which may have prevented everything that happened with the finding, so to speak, or the discovery, which wasn't really a discovery, of America because of Columbus. So it's interesting to see that all of these events cause and effect will eventually lead to the finding of our own country. Um, but that's a completely different topic that we could talk hours about and what if situations can always just keep going. So anyways, what I want you to do right now. Yesterday I had you set up on notebook page 26 your own questions. So questions you still have as we are talking about these topics because I can't teach you everything and there's so much that you're missing out on and you may be wondering. So what I want you to do right now on notebook page 26 is to list two to three questions that you still have about any of the following topics we just discussed. So here's a few things we talked about in this video. Write down at least two to three questions and move on to the next video where I explain how to do the bumper sticker assignment.